So here we have our plate that has been drawn on and handled a whole lot and then covered with latex. So there's latex on the clouds and on my cow to keep him protected. And now I'm ready to add the color. And I do the color work all with brushes. People often ask me if I airbrush, but it's all done with brushes, which is, again, less equipment in my small studio. It's less cleanup. Um, the thing that I love about this is that I use very little bits of color. So underglazes can be expensive and they actually last a really long time with this technique because you're using them more like a wash rather than a really heavy coat of color. And I have found that you can mix slips and underglazes. So some of them don't work, some of them do, but these two colors of yellow here, these are both the same white slip with different levels of titanium yellow added. So this one has five, this one has 15, and then this is the orange Amico velvet underglaze. And these will mix just fine. The thing that I have found though is you need to put the yellow down first before, the, or the slip down before the underglaze when you're mixing. Sometimes for some reason, if you put the underglaze down first, it'll resist the slip a little bit. So I make sure if I'm using a combo of the two that I do the slips first and then the underglaze layer. So to start, I want a nice thin coat of slips. So I make sure that my slips are all nicely mixed up and that they're ready to go. And I have a clean bucket of water and my kind of rinse water here on the side. So I'm gonna go into my clean bucket of water. I'm just gonna thin out on my brush here just a little bit. And I'm gonna start by washing over the surface with my, this is my lightest yellow. And from here, I'll move on to my medium yellow. Do the same thing, a little bit of water. So to start here, I'm just gonna block in these colors. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of mixing happening just yet. And the easiest gradients to do are where you're not going to extremes. So you're not going from like blue to yellow. That can be really hard. Where here, I'm going from a couple different colors of yellow to an orange. It's a little bit easier. I do some of those harder combos as well, but this is a good one to start out with. And then I'll lay in my orange. So now, once I have my three colors down, I can start working the transitions. So this is where the sponge is gonna come in handy. So I'm gonna actually take a little of this color off by just rubbing it on the sponge. And then we'll go back and work this transition. So I'm gonna go down into the orange and bring it back up into the yellow. It's really important you don't get distracted and flip your brush over because then you're gonna put the orange up high. So you can sort of see now I've got orange on my yellow brush. So I wanna make sure I keep the same orientation as I'm brushing and bringing that orange up into the yellow. And then we can go back so I'll wipe off that orange so I don't contaminate my yellow. Go back to our light yellow and bring that down into the dark yellow. It can be helpful too if you flip upside down so that you're seeing it from a different perspective because I'm trying to keep a consistent horizon line. I don't want my horizon to be kinked way off to the side. So I'm trying to keep that level. So go back and work that. And I'm gonna go one more time in with the darker yellow and probably a little more of that really, get a really nice dark orange right down at the bottom there. So I'm gonna rub off some of that yellow so I don't have too much on my brush at this stage. So this is where the texture can be really nice because it will, my brush is actually gonna pull a little bit of the material off the high spots. So again, that's just gonna give me a little more variation. Okay, that transition looks pretty good. I'm just gonna adjust this top one a little bit more. The tricky thing about this is you're not gonna see exactly what you're gonna get until you fire it. So sometimes 
the gradient will look awesome on the leather hard piece. And then when you fire it, you're like, ah, oh, it's not quite where I wanted it. But so now I've got a good gradient going. I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe off my excess. And then I can peel off the latex. So to do that, I actually like to do that right now because I want the slip to still be a little bit wet because if I let it set, it'll set in the lines here and I'll get kind of a jagged edge. So I'm gonna use these really fine needle nosed um, tweezers and I'm gonna grab right in a scraffita line so you can't see my mark. I'm gonna pick up that latex and slowly peel it back to reveal my cow below. Here she is.